Hey ladies and gentlemen, uh, so I tried to fake my own death and spread rumors about it to get publicity for the channel because I figured that it would be easier than actually making videos each week, but um, it didn't stick, it didn't seem to work out, so I'm back to um, back to the good old fashioned way, just making videos, so uh, we're going to just dive in where we left off and pretend that none of this ever happened. So this leaves us in chapter 4 now of capitalist realism. I'm going to try to learn how to do like sound effects and uh, make little like texts appear and stuff like that to make this um, more structured and maybe easier to understand and stuff. But until then you're just going to have to bear with me. So um, Mark Fisher, the writer of this book, is a teacher and um, at a university I believe and he looks at his students to see problems that are rising up in, in uh, our generation. And um, he has a, a term that he's called reflexive impotence, which is the belief or the attitude that, um, like, things are bad. We know things are bad, but there's nothing we can do to change it, nothing we can do to fix it, especially from a very uh, individual standpoint. And this, in a sense, becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And that if we don't believe we can do it, we can't, you know, take act. We don't take action. But there's a lot of sort of immobilizing, a lot of paralyzing problems uh, in, in the youth today. You can look at the rising rates of depression and anxiety, for instance, to the point where he says, it is not an exaggeration to say that being a teenager in late capitalist Britain is now close to being reclassified as a sickness. So these things are so common, they're so widespread that being a teenager is essentially having some sort of problem, some sort of... Um, emotional, mental, or learning uh, disability or issue. Uh, and the problem is, is these are all privatized, meaning it's up to the individual. Oh, it's because you have a chemical imbalance in your head. Uh, the individual's responsibility of taking care of their um, disability or their issue. Um, so it's not politicized. It's not looked as being a, a problem of the greater structure of, of essentially capitalism, right? Here he's looking at Britain, but the U.S. you can say the same thing too. So he has another uh, he has another uh, term that he's called depressive hedonia, because depression is usually the inability to find pleasure. But with this, it's the inability to do anything but seek pleasure. The the neglect or taking for granted that um, fulfillment or happiness lies outside the pleasure pain the pleasure pain principle. There's this there's sense that something is missing. This feeling that there's more. But we don't look outside of our search for pleasure, right? We sort of take our pursuit of happiness, our pleasure, and we put it as all there is. So we constantly are seeking pleasure, and yet we're not actually finding what we're looking for within this. And then he spends a lot of time in, in the problem of the education system, that students are caught in between this old role, this old disciplinary um, regime, which is, you know, sit straight, you know, look ahead, do your Latin... Our current state, right, if we go back to looking at the structure and how the structure is affecting us, um, something like ADHD, he looks as being a pathology of late capitalism, that we're entering, that the way that we uh, take information, the way we absorb information, is sort of essentially changing our brains, changing the way that we're capable of process processing information. So the ability to sit down and read a book, right, from cover to cover, do this really in-depth view is something that we're losing because of, uh, let's say, social media and so forth, which is just lots of fast information. And so we take information, these little bite-sized, the way we perceive time are just these little bite-sized chunks, um, which essentially as we adapt, we're also losing our ability to uh, go in-depth, right, into, into reading. He says uh, we're entering into a post-literate age where we've sort of moved beyond being literate into uh, recognizing logos and pictures and this sort of, uh, you know, mixed media where we're not just reading. Uh, I don't think he's arguing that we're, you know, becoming illiterate, but we're now moving beyond this sort of l literate age. Um, so now students are caught, right? They have this old disciplinary regiment and this new post-literate regiment. Right, we're right in the middle. He says that his students a lot of times get bored, right? They find the, the, the reading boring, and it's not the content of the reading that's boring as much as the act of reading itself. And he 
now defines boredom as being unplugged from this digital matrix, being unplugged from social media, from the really fast-paced consumerism that we live in. Uh, and he says, it is not so much the content of the written material that is at issue here. It is the act of reading itself that is deemed to be boring. What we are facing here is not just the time-honored teenage torpor, but the mismatch between a post-literate new flesh that is too wired to concentrate and the confining concentrational logics of a de decaying disciplinary system. I think that he's represented our generation very well with this, of being wired, of being having to be constantly a part of this fast-paced matrix, the consumerism, sorry, what he calls the communicative sensation stimulus matrix of texting, YouTube, fast food, etc. With this, he says that our perception of time essentially breaks down. We're always scrolling to the new, scrolling to the new, scrolling to the new. The time sort of becomes disconnected. So we can't relate our present actions, right? Procrastination and escapism with future failure. And, and this is something that I can't fully wrap, especially the disconnect of time. It seems really strange to me. But I think you can look, you know, coming from somebody who was at one point a very terrible student. There definitely is some sort of disconnect. Uh, that's hard to put your finger on. He, he says a few more things that are interesting in this chapter, but I don't have time to go into that right now. Uh, hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you later. Take it easy.